one, which is expense by vendor summary. Let's open that one up, open it on the right. I'm gonna do a range change up top, close the hand boogie, range change 010122 tab, 123122 tab and run it. So now we've got our expenses by vendor. So if I scroll down, we come out to the 819859. We would expect this to give us more detail on the income statement line items. I'm gonna collapse the income statement line items for expenses. And so we can see like the subtotals. So we had here our major expense category, which is 5203.31 plus cost of goods sold is a type of expense 405 plus the other expenses at the bottom is the 2916. Doesn't exactly tie out to what we have over here. Note that often there could be differences if we're doing data input into the system that isn't properly assigning out a, a vendor, for example, when we enter the transactions. So this is similar to what we saw with the sales subledger reports. For example, if I go to the balance sheet, you'll recall when we saw the subledgers for accounts receivable, breaking out the accounts receivable by customer, it tied in exactly. That's because QuickBooks kind of forces us every time we do something to accounts receivable to give it the information it needs, the customers, to make a subledger that ties out exactly. It doesn't force us to do that with the income statement accounts, such as the expenses here. So let's go to the income statement. Whenever I post something to an expense account, if I don't add a vendor, the QuickBooks is not gonna deny me from being able to record the transaction. So in other words, if I hit the plus button up top, when we enter transactions that usually have an expense related to them, they're an expense form, a check form, a bill form. Now, especially when you're using bank feeds, you're typically gonna have expense forms that come through and you can possibly enter the expense form by just adding a category and not including a name, a vendor. If you do that, then you're not gonna have the vendor subledgers that will tie out properly. However, if every time you add a new transaction, you enter all of your expenses uh, using an expense form, possibly even with the use of the bank feeds, and you make sure that you copy over the vendor, then you'll get that added detail of the vendor subledger reports that you can generate over here. And you can start to see a nice report on who you're paying. And this is another report that you can you can generate a nice, a nice chart from. You can imagine making a pie chart from this, exporting this data to Excel, for example, make a pie chart, make a bar chart, and so on from it.